good afternoon, everyone, or good morning, depending on uh, from where you join uh, this webinar today. I'm happy to welcome every one of you uh, about this webinar, which is about field models, a new tool we have just introduced in Transcribus. I'm going to give you a brief overview of what we are going to have a look today. Um, so the content of our webinar today will be first an introduction from my side. Then we will hear, hear how to prepare training data for field models, how to train a field model, how to use a field model, and eventually also a Q&A session where all of the questions that you have already entered during your, your registration for this webinar, uh, we're trying to address them as, as good as possible. There are a lot of questions, so uh, let's see how uh, we will manage this in terms of timing. But many of them were also similar, so I, I'm confident that we can address many of your questions. But first, let's have a look at who is joining uh, today this webinar with me. We first have my colleague Johannes from the customer success team, who will mainly take care about the chat, the questions you might have. You can just enter them in the chat. We will always also try to address them during our uh, presentation. So uh, we like it to, to make the presentation a little bit more um, yeah, vivid and also incorporate your question during questions during our uh, yeah, slides and the things we show. Uh, so yeah, just feel free to enter your questions in the chat if you have any as they come up during the presentation. So we will take care of them. And then there's also Helena joining us today from the comms team, who will also uh, share part of the presentation with me. And finally, it's me. It's um, I am Flo. I'm from the product team. And I will give you a brief introduction to field models, what they are, and what you can do with them in Transcribus. So you all might know similar material. That's why many of you are probably here which is historical material. And since you're here, you probably have also already used Transcribus before. You can do a number of things with Transcribus. One of them is recognize uh, lines, so uh, where text is on the image, and also group those lines into regions to eventually also get text out. That's the major uh, yeah, functionality of Transcribus, um, text recognition. You can recognize historical handwritings, printed material, typewritten material, you name it. But there is still one missing piece we felt, and that's we were uh, yeah, working on now for a long time with field models, and are now happy to introduce this new uh, tool. You might have already seen that on beta. We've had field models for a long time on beta now as well, where many of you have already tried it out and yeah, have shared your feedback with us which was also really helpful in uh, further developing this technology and then eventually also integrating it into the platform. If we summarize what we can already do with Transcribus is when we use Transcribus, we know where the text is and what it says, but we don't really know what it's for. And that's why field models come in quite handy to analyze the structure and the function of this uh, yeah, layout. So where the text is on the image, which comes with the yeah, intrinsic uh, yeah, value of the of the text that is on the yeah, handwritten or printed material. For this, as you can see here, field models can be trained to yeah, automatically detect these layout elements and then also label them with regions or text. In this example, you can see, for instance, before we did not know uh, what is a marginalia or we did not know what is a heading unless we would have labeled that manually. Now with field models, we can train our own models that detect uh, yeah, exactly those layout elements in the material to further then use this material for analysis, um, incorporate the yeah, data into databases or yeah, do further processing with it. So this information yeah, comes quite, uh, quite handy and is really important to do uh, yeah, further analysis with it to explain how this works in principle. Uh, we will first have a look at how this technology works. Uh, one key uh, word here is segmentation. So to understand what is on the image, you need to segment the image into different categories or classes from a technical perspective. Here we have an image 
it is not an image that you might want to usually work with in transcribers, but it's really helpful to explain the concept of segmentation. So if you're looking at this image, you can see a number of things. There's a couple of people standing at the beach yeah, and looking at, at the sea. From a yeah, segmentation perspective, you can do something like this. You might want to know what type of classes are there. There is sky in blue. There is water or the sea in yellow. Then there's people in red. And then there's also the beach or sand. So basically, we've identified four different classes or four different types of objects in this image. That's also exactly how field models will work. But there's still one missing thing. What is if people or the beach or the sea overlap? We cannot tell how many yeah, sand grains, maybe is not the best example, they are very small. But if those people would stand closer together, could not tell is there one person or is this, is this two people on the image if those people would overlap. Because yeah, semantic segmentation, as you can see in this image, really just assigns a class and say human, sea, uh, sky, beach. What field models in turn can do is assign uh, yeah, instance classes to those objects. So every single object will be detected. And here we are mainly interested in how many humans or how many people are on this image. You can yeah, detect these people like so. You can see here, we've now three different colors, which means we have three different classes now assigned to those objects. And we have successfully identified those, those three instances in the image. This is exactly how the technology of field models then also works once you use it on historical material. You might want to know how many headlines are on those, image, are on those images, and with field models, you can now detect those headlines. So to summarize this again, those field models that we've introduced now help you to identify and categorize those layout elements in your image to ensure that the document structure is preserved so that you know, OK, this is an image, this is a headline, that is a page number, and understood in a semantical, yeah, accurate manner. So you want to assign those classes to those different elements to know what type of element it is. If we have a look at the process um, from a perspective in Transcribus, you know, first you need to upload your data, so you need to get the data into Transcribus. And then there's the yeah, very interesting step of recognizing images with transcribers. As said, so far you can recognize layout and text, but with the new technology, you can also yeah, do more. Yeah, just to reiterate, with the layout recognition, so far you could already recognize baselines. So where is the text on the image and regions. Well, now with field models, you can label those regions. You can train a model to understand, okay, this is a marginalia, and this is a paragraph, and that's a headline. From a process perspective, this is an added process. So it's one step more that you might want to use in Transcribus. Uh, yeah, as a general uh, yeah, hint, you don't need to use field models. If you're really just interested in the running text of your documents, then there is no point in using field models. But you might have more complex layouts. And you might have layout information that you want to extract maybe using a uh, database yeah, or just using a structured form, then you might want to use field models. From a process perspective, we um, yeah, suggest that you first work on fields. So before you even think about the text, first try to think about the layout, label the layout, and then train a field model to recognize the layout. Then only in a second step, you can work on the baselines. And finally, you can work on the text. There is an option that you can also use field models as the last step where you want first, and that's true for many of your projects that already have existing material within Transcribus, where you still have layout elements that are not recognized, but you want to preserve the data you already have. In this example, and we will see that uh, yeah, in, in practice uh, later on, as my colleague Kalene will, will show it in practice, um, this will mean if you already have running text recognized, but you are interested in marginalia, as in this example, you can still add that to existing layout. There's an option once you use a field recognition that you can uh, just add the recognition output to your existing data. Now let's have a look at 
yeah, what types of material. There were a number of questions um, in advance what types of material uh, field models can be used. The answer is simple, uh, yeah, virtually any type of material, try it out. Uh, you can train this uh, yeah, technology as we've seen to identify objects. It's not limited to any text or language. So you can really um, train a model that identifies distinctive uh, layout elements and they don't need to be super distinctive. So there needs to be one little visual cue and that's enough for the model to learn, okay, that's a different thing. Uh, just today, uh, in, the, yeah, in preparation for this webinar, I've had a look at the output of a model. There was virtually a lot of running text, and the paragraphs just had a, a very small indent. So it was like two characters, where every par paragraph was indented. So it was starting a little bit uh, to the right. And that was enough for the model to learn, OK, that's a paragraph, and it labeled all of the par paragraphs yeah, basically uh, yeah, almost correctly. I've not seen many paragraphs that were not labeled correctly. So uh, from a technical perspective, you can use field models on any type of material and for any type of object. So it's not limited to text or any language. So you can really um, yeah, try out field models and yeah, yeah, use your imagination uh, to what extent you want to recognize different instances in your material. We have just named a few but you have probably more experience in all of those materials and can yeah, find out yourself what you might want to use this technology for. To show you a couple of examples, the simplest one is text regions. So you can use this technology to identify text regions in material, but the, can also use it to yeah, segment newspapers. That's a very common approach uh, for, for this type of technology that you use this instance uh, segmentation to really segment your newspaper into different layout elements. There was a question, I'll uh, probably address it later on as well. What field models cannot provide at this moment is article separation, because if you have a look at this uh, specific example, might be the case that the first paragraph on the left is connected to the last little bit uh, here in the middle. Might be that this is one article and it should be connected. What field models cannot do at the moment at least, is connect these two uh, regions and say that's one. You can try if your layout is really distinctive and um, yeah, very homogeneous and it's always exactly the same uh, way. You can try to just assign two different tags to it and say that's always uh, yeah, part one of the article and that's part two of the article. Use two distinctive tags and then process it afterwards to connect these two tags. So it would be a workaround, but in general, uh, yeah, Field models are really, as, it, as they are now, um, yeah, meant to recognize different instances of a layout element, but not connect them, at least yet. I presented, it's a very uh, yeah, good question if we uh, addressed it right away. That percentage is basically the confidence of the model. So once the model runs a recognition, there's a confidence value uh, the model uh, outputs. And it basically says, okay, I'm 100% sure that's a paragraph. But here, yeah, I'm only 60% sure, 59% sure that this is actually a paragraph. I think it's a paragraph, but uh, not 100% sure. Um, yeah, so it's a confidence level. We will have a look at this uh, yeah, value or metric later on because there's also has a setting where you can address these confidence levels. And you can also use it for form segmentation. So very distinctive fields on uh, yeah, historical material. Here you can see it's an uh, yeah, uh, uh, index card where you can really label very distinctive fields like father and mother of this index card and then extract this information in a structured way to later on. This use case is very straightforward. You might want to use this data in a database because uh, especially for genealogy or other types of research, uh, economic research, for instance, you um, yeah, could use this data in a form uh, where you want to run yeah, any kind of analysis. And for that, you need it in a structured uh, way. You can, of course, also use it for multi-column layouts, as we've seen. So it's just a simpler use case as for newspapers. Newspapers are a little bit more complex than this, but you can also use it for that. And as, and as said before, 
they are basically, so field models are not bound to any type of instance. So you can also train it to recognize illustrations. Or you, you can see on the right side, uh, it's a very nice model. You can also train it to recognize sheet music, for instance, and different uh, yeah, layout elements of that music, like annotation or the text below annotation. So you can uh, really train a model to yeah, identify those elements of your material that you need. And now I'm handing over to my colleague, Lene, where we will have a yeah, more hands-on look on things, how field models uh, yeah, need to be prepared and how they can be used then. Yeah, take it away, Helene. Thank you. I'm just trying to share my screen right now. Um, we had one question in the chat about what field models do in regards to the text. I think um, my colleague already answered it, but just to maybe repeat that the field models are there to recognize the layout. The transcription or recognizing text would be a separate step. So today we're looking at recognizing layout and recognizing fields. Okay, so how do we get from the text from the document to the accurate layout? First, it's similar to the text recognition models, so you need to choose the right approach, choosing between public models and custom models. As you know from text recognition models, if you've used them before, the public models are pre-trained, they can be used right away, and they're quite easy to use. We have already two public models, the Baroness of Blocks and the Marginalia Monarch. Um, maybe you've tried them before. The Baroness of Blocks is really for blocks or regions and paragraphs, and the Marginalia Monarch is, as the name says, for marginalia. So, but what would you do if there are no public models for your layouts? In that case, similar again as to the text recognition models, you would have to train a custom models, uh, a custom model as they are custom to your material, they are adaptable, and you can control what data goes into the model. That is also in regards to the layout. So the layout is also data with uh, which you can train the custom model. So the custom AI field model training uses these examples to help AI accurately recognize and understand the layout in your training data. So same as text recognition, it needs examples to recognize the right layout. And I think we can switch right into the web app right now um, where we where we will go through the workflow. So the workflow to custom to train a custom model is to first draw the region to train the model, save it as ground truth, and then you can start the training. So let's take a look at how that looks in the web app. I'm switching over to the web app. So let's see. So let's take a look maybe first at this example with the newspaper. So I mentioned before that we have public models and that the results can be quite good. And I'll show you the example with this newspaper. Here you can see that there is no layout yet recognized. And similar to the text recognition, the, the workflow is kind of similar. The steps that we walk through are kind of similar. So we click on recognition, but instead of staying in the text recognition area, we go to fields, and then we can choose one of the two public models. And let me start the recognition. And here you can see it is trying to recognize the layout based on the training material of the public model. Let's see if um, we have to wait longer. So while it recognizes them well, as you can see here, it does recognize the different paragraphs quite well. There is a difference with this indent in the beginning that the public model recognizes really well. But what it doesn't recognize is, for example, this figure here. So while public models can be really useful for this, custom models can be trained, for example, to also recognize this figure. What you also see here is that the tags are missing. So this is a model that is really just to get this basic information of regions or blocks. 
So let me show you now how to create training data from scratch if you have a more complex layout. Maybe let's save that for now. Technically, you can also use this as a basis, but let me show you how you can really create it from scratch in case you've never worked with fields and regions before. So here we are working with index cards, just as an example. And I will open the index card and we will also see it in the document editor. As you know, we have the layout editor on the left and the text editor on the right. For this, we really only need the layout editor because we want to draw the layout. So to draw the layout, we go to the left side and click on add region. And to add the region, we click once where we want to start the region and then click again where we want the region to end. So in this case, it's not a dragging motion, but you click to add and then you click to release. And then you just do that as many times as you want. If you want to add tags, then let me switch to selection mode. You can select the region by clicking on it, use right click, and then assign the structure type. So here, for example, this is the name. So I will add the tag name. So the tags are basically the indicators. And with the help of the tags, you can preserve um, information and context in the layout. Here we have the name of the newspaper. So we add this tag here. If you have something that you want to tag, but you can't really find a fitting tag here, you can look in the settings, go to tags, and maybe there is a suitable tag that is just not visible yet. So for example, let's say footer. I enable footer as a tag, go back. And then if I click on structure type, I can see that footer appears. If there is no tag in this list either, you can simply create a new tag by clicking on edit tag in collection settings. And you can see a new window opens. And here, let's create a structure tag. You can click on create new and give your tag a name. So let's say we just call it, um, just as an example, maybe the time or time and time and do this time and date just to show you how it works choose a color let's keep this one click create and then you can see the structure type is saved and it should appear in this list here and if we go back I think we might need to just refresh this page since we did make some changes in the settings. And let's see, let's go to the settings. Time and date appears as an additional new tag. What we also have, which is really nice and can help save some time, is you can enable to use a double click to open the structure tag menu. So you don't need to right click, left click, remember, but you just double click and you can choose and you only have those options. If you remember the right click, you have multiple options of vertical split, horizontal split, but if you just wanna work with tags, simply double click oh, and then you added the tag. What you can also do here, if you work with a document where you want to add one type of tag to multiple regions. So for example, you're working with maybe a newspaper and you want to add multiple paragraphs on one page and you don't want to d draw the paragraph, uh, draw the region and then add the tag with a double click, which is multiple steps that you have to do. You can use a default structure tag for new text regions. So for example, let's say in this case, the details, just because we have them enabled as the tags here. So the default structure tag is details. And if I, let's enlarge this a little bit, draw a new region now, immediately the region is tagged as details.
So this is a way where you can save a little bit of time when working with uh, drawing regions and creating the training data. And I think that is most of the information for drawing the regions and creating the training data. One thing please remember is to save the changes and maybe also save the status. So if you save it in ground truth, similar again to the text recognition, it, it indicates you that this is a correct layout or the correct data that you want to train your model with. So let's put the status as ground truth and click save. Just a very little hint. Um, if you want to have yeah, more complex shapes, you can also adapt those shapes. They don't need to be rectangles. You can just uh, click on the line and drag a new uh, yeah, edge or basically point of that region to add an additional um, yeah, anchor point of the region. Uh, thanks for the tip. Um, I think I'll switch back to the um, presentation to the slides for now. Let's see. Okay. So we went to have a look through the website. I showed you the layout editor, and we also saw how we can create regions and assign tags. And we had a look at our new tools for efficient tagging. And now we can go to the training. We can now look at how you can train a field model. So field models can be trained to automatically recognize and mark these certain layout components of your documents. And as we know, we have different models for text and to recognize lines with the text recognition model and the baseline models. And in this case, we will look, uh, uh, we will look at the field models to train a model to recognize the text, uh, the text regions. For this, as we just had a look, we prepared the ground truth, the training data. And this is, again, the accurate, accurately drawn and tagged regions of the image. So for the text recognition model, it's the accurately transcribed pages. And in this case, it's the accurately drawn and tagged, re tagged regions of the image. And as you can see now, we had a look at the training workflow already before. We already have drawn the regions and tagged them. We have already saved them as ground truth. And now we're already at the last step and we can start the first training. Around 20 to 25 pages of training data is a good start. But of course, if you have more training data, that's already quite good. So let's take a look and go through the workflow in the web app. I think it's easier if I show it directly there. So we will choose and select the images that we want to use as training data. And let's choose already 50. And now we click on train a model and train a field model. So we are already at the first step training data. We have already selected the training data now. And this is the set of examples that is used to set the model's parameters. So these are the images that are shown to the AI software as the example, as we mentioned before, as a correct example to show how to recognize this specific layout. And now in the training workflow in the, in the web app, we're at the step of tag selection. So here you can select the tags that you want to include in the training. And here we want to use the ones that we actually included, which is reference, details, newspaper, name, and shelf mark. What you can see here is also these two options, recognize untagged regions. So this means, as you can see here, this would include untagged regions in the training. So for example, um, the regions are then recognized, but not tagged. So if you have a newspaper and you just want the structure without tags or just text regions, you can click on this. Um, or maybe if you have a layout where the main information is the region itself. 
You also have the option to train line polygons. And this is basically a line model. So this you can use if a normal baseline model does not work. Um, you can use it and try to see if it gives you a better result, but this option is quite experimental. So just keep that in mind if you use this one. But we'll leave it at that for now. And since we have selected the tags, you have an overview of the selected text here as well, we can go to the next step. And this is the validation data. And the validation data is the set of examples that is not included in the training, but it's used to look at the accuracy or calculate the accuracy during the training process. And we always recommend 10% of the selected pages. So this is set by default. We recommend it so you can leave this at 10% here. And next, we're already basically at the end of the model training, we add the model name. So here, let's call it index uh, card model. Uh, and then let's call it two because we already tried it with another model. Description is index card for the webinar. Here you can add an image that will appear here. That can be quite useful if you want to see on one glance what type of material, what type of layout you're working with. Um, so you can add the URL here. And then we can simply click on Next. Here we have, as always, an overview of all the information of the training data, the validation set. And we can check if we have the right tag selected. And then we just click on Start to begin the training of the field model. Once you have trained the model, this will probably take a while to train um, as models sometimes do. But once you have trained it, you can find it in your models gallery. Again, go to fields because it is a layer or it is a field model. And then click on private models since it is a model that you trained and it's not a public model. And now you can see it. This is that we won the one model that we prepared already, uh, just so we can show it to you. And this is the model that we prepared and trained also on the index cards. So you can see here the example image is the index card, and you can look at the details here. This here, these details are also quite useful information to evaluate your model and evaluate the the um, the quality of your model. This shows the amount of tags that have been included in the in the training data. So if you have, for example, a tag that is only mentioned twice or once, then the model might not be able to recognize it in other material that you use the model on as well. So since we have it appearing quite often, we can rely on the model to also perform a good result. Another way to measure or take a look at how accurate the model is and evaluate the accuracy of the model is the mean average precision. So with the text recognition model, we have the CER. And with the field model, this is kind of a point where you can evaluate the accuracy. This is a measure that evaluates how accurate the system detects and labels regions. So it considers if they were detected and how well their shape and size matches the validation data. So it's quite a complex metric. Uh, it's precise, but it measures a lot of data. So that can have an influence on the value. Generally, we say that models with over 60% of this mean average precision is um, already quite quite good and can leave very uh, can deliver very satisfactory results so this is also a number that you can keep in mind to have a look at and it gives you an indication of how well the model performs however um since i mentioned before it's precise but it measures a lot and that can have an influence on the value it's always good to actually to just use it and 
evaluate the results for yourself. So always try it out on your material and you can see if it actually works well. Um, if you want to improve your model, if you see, okay, the value here is quite low or I only have two name tags, what you can do is save, uh, is use the model and then improve and correct the layout on the material that you use it on. So basically you start a new training with the newly recognized and corrected pages because it has more ground truth data and more accurate ground truth data, this new model can then be an improved version of the first model. So this is how you can improve a model as well by training a new one with improved uh, ground truth and more ground truth data, basically. Um, how do we use this model? So we have this model now trained and now we want to use it on our material. That's just, that is kind of the reason why we trained it and why we wanted, wanted to have it. How do we do that? I'm going into my collection again, into the document with the index cards. These ones are all recognized, but here we have some documents where there is no layout recognition yet. So I can choose a few pages. Let's maybe do these three. Go on recognize. Again, I select fields. I go to private models. I choose my index card model. And then what we have here are advanced settings. The detection confidence level, the shape detail level, and also this option of add to existing layout. And this is something that uh, we mentioned before. I'll show you what these three uh, settings, advanced setting mean in a second. Let me just show you the model first. I click on start recognition. And that was not the best choice. Uh, let me just open it again. Let's see. I think hmm. I think I should have started it probably in the page. It might have been better to to show yeah, uh, how fine. how well it, it works. It will take between ten and twenty seconds per image. Okay. Um, in the meantime, about a minute in, in general. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the meantime, I can show the advanced settings, and I think yeah. it's maybe better if I show them in the slides because then we can really show what these advanced settings uh, mean. So let's see, we are here. Let's see. So first we have the detection confidence level. And this is the value where you can set of how sure the model should be that, for example, a marginalia is a marginalia or a name region is a name region. And this has nothing to do with the model itself, but you can see if it makes the result better by tuning this parameter. So as you can see here, the confidence is set to 0 0.75 and it recognized in this example, these two figures. But if we set it lower, it might even recognize another region or here figure exactly and correctly, it's just less confident that it is actually a figure or marginalia. But if you put it lower, it might even provide better results. Again, you can tune the parameters here a bit and see what works better for your material. Maybe just as a then, very small note, oh, if you're yeah. looking for those values, they're apparently not displayed in the software itself. So. Um, they are present in the XML, so the output really um, adds these values uh, to the uh, tagged regions. But currently, they're not uh, shown in the software. We might want to work on that. Um, but just to explain, um, yeah, this this feature we have added the values here, as it's quite technical uh, in general. But with this threshold, at least you can make uh, the recognition results yeah catch more uh, yeah positives. Question is if they're all correct positive uh, recognition results. Sorry for interrupting. No, it's all good. I'm glad you added that information. That's probably very helpful. 
Um, yes, let's go to the next one. The next one is the shape level detail. So this indicates how correct or let's say how precise the shape of the region has to be. So if the shape level detail is set to low, then it's a rectangle. If it's set on medium, there are already more points. So there might be some slanted lines already. And if it's high, you can see it's really matched to the letters. It goes down where there's a Q and it really matches the text quite exactly. And it also depends, however, how the model was trained. So if, as it says here, the model was trained on simple shapes, if you set the setting on high, the setting will still provide the simple shapes. But again, you can try to tune the parameters here um, depending on what kind of output you're looking for. And lastly, we have add to existing layout. So this is something that Flo has mentioned before. If you have a layout and you want to add some specific layout elements or tags, you can click on um, add to existing layout. The existing layout is kept. This is not changed, but just something is added. So as you can see here, the text regions, the paragraphs are already uh, indicated. There are already text regions there, but we want to add marginalia. And you can do that by running a marginalia model over it, and only the marginalia will be added. This you can also use, for example, if you train a model for um, page numbers and you want to add the page numbers after you've already added a lot of uh, regions to, to a lot of material, you can run your um, page number model over it and click on Add to Existing Layout and then only the page numbers will be added there. Okay, then let's take a look if in the meantime, the layout was recognized. Yes. Nice, and we can see the model worked really well. It has rec recognized all of the regions that we wanted, the shelf mark, name, newspaper, details, and even the reference. And I think that it, is it for my part and i can hand over to we just have a look Florian. at the other two examples i'm just curious because the details were cropped a little ah, I mean, for the, the other pages you mean yeah because you started it for more there it, ah yeah uh, i started for three it looks better i was just curious so in, in yeah. general you've seen we've trained the model with 47 pages or so and it already provides yeah, i would say decent results especially if you have a look at the last line it was really trained to recognize only the date as a reference and not the, enti the, the entire line. And yeah, it basically, yeah, very successfully recognizes that part of the layout without even yeah, taking the full line as reference, um, which is quite nice. You've seen on the first page, the details as the line was shorter than usual. I think on the other examples, there were just more lines, for instance, in the details. Um, yeah, there the model struggles a little bit because it's just a very short line. So obviously adding more ground tooth will also improve the model here. Um, but yeah, once I've seen the technology first, I was yeah, pretty astonished that yeah, with uh, let's say uh, 30 to 50 pages, you can already have a really good model. And as you might know from training a text model, um, 30 to 50 pages sounds a lot there, but you can imagine uh, yeah, tagging 50 pages with these tags is a matter of maybe an hour or so. So you can really quickly train a model for your material as yeah, annotating uh, layout is a much quicker process. You've seen we've also tried to even add more ergonomic tools to make it even quicker, but it's a much quicker process than yeah, transcribing manually and producing text ground truth. So basically training data for a text model. Yeah. Since you mentioned text model, maybe we can show right here that you can get the text recognition oh, or get a, a text recognition as well. So if you want not just the layout, but then also the transcribed text as well, you can simply, once you have the layout that you want, click on recognition. Here we stay in text recognition and then choose a text recognition model, start recognition, and then it 
recognizes and transcribes the text in your material. So this is what we mentioned before that the layout and the text recognition is a separate step. But the nice thing is that as you can already see here, maybe we can make that a bit bigger. You can see here that the regions also have the names of the tags. So even the structure is kind of shown in the transcribed text and the transcribed text is structured in a similar way than the texts are. There we go. So you can simply run the text recognition over the documents with uh, the layout after you've used, for example, a field model as well. And there's a number right. of additional settings maybe we cannot address them today as we're a little bit short in time. But just to address it quickly, in the last line, you see the text recognition. If you don't set that, does not respect the regions. So it really recognizes uh, the entire line well, that the baseline the text will provide. So you see that in uh, a C and is still recognized. But there are, is also a setting to exclude that and really just recognize text within the regions so you don't have additional noise so to speak if you don't need yeah this part of the data in your in your output um then i'm trying to all right i'll hand over to you Flo. yes so just quickly um here we will not lose too much time um, uh, as their settings currently are also a little bit more limited, but we still try uh, to address this as well. So what are you going to do with data then next? Might be exporting. So if you export your data, um, it's just the usual export process. You select the pages or the documents that you might want to export. And then there's a number of settings um, where you can select different export options Currently, if you want to get the entire data out, the yeah, only option where you also get the structural tags out is page XML. So we are working to include the structural tags in other export formats as well. Currently, you of course get the entire data. That was also one of the questions. You can of course also export all of your data um, and the training data as well um, from your model as an XML, so as a structured uh, data file. Currently, the other formats do not support the structural text. We will include those uh, yeah, in future uh, as they might come in quite handy, but there are still a lot of questions to, to be answered before where these tags will be. If you only output the text as a Word document, we need to have some logic where that information goes because Word is not equipped for also addressing uh, layout information uh, in that sense. Yeah. So. Uh, Let's skip that. We don't need to have a look at that in the software. But um, as said at the beginning of the webinar, we have a number of questions prepared. And uh, before that, we just briefly want to wrap it up. So yeah, Transcribus is your AI powered alley. Um, we, as you might have uh, witnessed in the last um, year, we've transitioned to a yeah, very powerful platform. For this, we also need to sustain uh, the platform Transcribus in the longer term. We offer a yeah, series of different plans for that, depending on your usage scenario. Uh, we've tried to keep it yeah, as free as possible. So most of the tools of Transcribus are still freely away, available, including 100 credits every single month for free users. So if you want to use Transcribus, you can still do so. Uh, for field models specifically, you need a Scala plan, as this is, yeah, from a development perspective, a tool where we've uh, invested uh, significantly. And obviously, we also need to see how, um, yeah, basically this technology can can be running, as there is also a powerful infrastructure that we need to run. And for this, we offer the field models. For now, as a uh, scholar plan feature, or on the, um, yeah, as a member of the cooperative, you can also access all features. And that's one of the yeah, biggest advantages of being a cooperative, we don't need to be super profit oriented as basically everything that we do is oriented towards Transcribus. We are basically uh, operating as a cooperative that has the sole goal of running Transcribus and further developing Transcribus without any shareholders that want to turn a profit. So we really can focus on Transcribus, but still the model needs to sustain itself. And for that, we have a number of different plans as explained um, with those different tiers 
depending on your usage scenario. And with the similar technology, there's also uh, something yeah, maybe more exciting, maybe not, depending on what you're currently working on. But there were many questions already in to, to this webinar or advanced uh, in advance to this webinar regarding table models. It's basically using the very same technology um, yeah, under the hood. So it's really also using instance segmentation to recognize tables in historical material. And there it's uh, where it's also getting really interesting because you can extract uh, tabular data in a structured form. Now here we already have the export option, for instance. You can already export tabular data as an Excel file. So uh, we are farther on that end, but we still need to iron, on, iron out um, some more bumps before we release uh, this technology. It's already available on beta to test and yeah, give feedback as well. Uh, but we're happy that we're really close with table models as well. Uh, we will have another webinar on 16th, uh, 16th of October, so in one and a half months. Um, where we will introduce that technology, explain what you can use table models for, how you can uh, yeah, annotate tables, what you need to keep in mind. There are some caveats that you also uh, yeah, need to be aware of uh, when training a table model. But in general, that's also very exciting technology, uh, which is basically using the same base technology, but is implemented in a different way that you can also uh, yeah, structurally extract tabular data. To sum it up, uh, as always, our mission here at Transcribers is really to build the best tools. So unlocking is in your court. You're the professionals when it comes to understanding the material. You know what the material is about. We are trying to provide the tools. We are very uh, yeah, happy to receive all of your feedback. Um, many of you also might, and that's also why Johannes is joining today, might know Johannes from our help desk. So we are really happy to get all of your feedback. Um, through the help desk, and many of us of, of you do so, which is great to always have a yeah, very um, good connection to you as the community where we can incorporate that in the development of our tool as well. That being said, we have a very extensive help center. Johannes has shared a number of different links uh, to the help center where we already always try to keep everything up to date. It's not super easy. Our team is still uh, not super extensive, and we uh, do our best to keep everything up uh, to date. So uh, if there is anything where you say, okay, that's not not up to date, make it, make us aware. Uh, we are also uh, just humans, and sometimes there are errors happening. So we're always always also happy to receive your feedback about the help center. Now let's maybe have a look at some questions. I've seen that you, Johannes, have already addressed many of those in the chat, but there were some questions in advance. We have organized them into some yeah, broad categories. They could uh, fit into different categories as well. Um, but we still try to add those questions um, yeah, to a couple of slides and go through them quickly. There are a lot of questions. So uh, let's call it question sprint and try to address those questions uh, briefly. Uh, if you have a specific follow-up question or other questions uh, re in relation to those, just add them to the chat and we'll We'll do our best to also address those. Um, some of them have already been answered, so we're hopefully quite quick. So um, yeah, what are field models? We hope that we could give you a good overview of what field models are, uh, how they work, and what you can do with them. Um, there are some limitations, as I said. There's, for instance, article separation is uh, not possible at the moment. There might be, and that's also maybe addressing the last question already, there might be some challenges you run into uh, for instance, when regions overlap, that's still an issue we're working on. There might be some instances where it's not super clear uh, which uh, region a certain instance is belonging to or instances are overlapping. There, the model basically produces two regions, but those two regions might overlap. For instance, if the marginalia is uh, also indented a little bit or overlapping the text a little bit, and then the outputted region might overlap. That might be one issue once you then uh, run text recognition as the text is added to every region. The text is basically um, visually uh, aligned to. So if there is text that is overlaid by two regions, the text will be recognized twice and added to both, region, both regions twice. So there are still some uh, minor downsides to it. Once you work with it, you might encounter those. 
Um, if you have questions, as I said, uh, we're happy to, to help with those as well. Um, selecting the right model at the moment is rather easy. We only have two. I've seen in the meantime, we've re released another one. So we have currently three public models that you can try out. So selecting the correct field model is rather easy then as they are uh, really straightforward. We really hope and count uh, on you then as well. If you have good and strong field models, we're always, always happy to share them with the community so others can benefit from your model as well. Um, yeah, best practices we've tried to show you. Uh, some of them, there are obviously others, and some of you that have already tried out field models extensively might already have more best practices than we do. So uh, here's also good to see if there's some exchange between you as the community. Um, yeah, article separation, we've, we've addressed that, so that's not possible at the moment. Um, we've also had a question, I think Johannes has already answered that, about vertical and uh, or maybe mixed layouts. In theory, as said, the uh, instance segmentation does not care about uh, writing orientation, right to left, top to bottom, if it's an image or if it's uh, text. So uh, the ob object uh, detection itself really does not care. So recognizing the region would be probably rather easy. What's more tricky then is recognizing the baselines correctly. If you have vertical text, then you might want to have a specific model for that. Could train a baseline model. There's also some data augmentation you could use there, where then images are rotated during training. Um, but that's certainly a more uh, tricky case. We are aware of, the, of that. Many of, of you have already uh, raised that case, so we will still take that into consideration. But it's also not super easy and straightforward to solve. Um, yeah. Then about training and usage, how to train and Create the model. I think Helene has shown it to a very good level. So uh, yeah, we will still tr try to produce more training material about field models in the future. But I think this webinar should give you a good overview about it. Um, then exporting the data. Um, as said, it's currently limited to page XML. You can export, of course, all data, but it's currently limited uh, to that format. Um, for different types of documents, as said. You can really optimize your models for a number of different uh, layout uh, complexities. Um, we've just uh, discussed the uh, degree of complexity that a feed model can reach before this, this webinar. It's still something that is not super clear uh, because this technology uh, has not been at, at least widely applied to this field uh, of research that we are in. So um, I would. I would confidently say that if your material has a somewhat of a heterogeneous um, composition, that field models are a very good so solution. Of course, there can be um, models that uh, yeah, are uh, performing very well on a, on a strict level, so recognizing a lot of different, also heterogeneous types of material might work, but we still have not the definite answer to the question uh, as it as it is as it, sorry as it is with text, is there a general purpose field model? At the current stage, I would rather say no, because layouts are such uh, yeah or have such more uh, levels of complexity and yeah, dimensions uh, in relation or as regards to to text. Um, that field models are probably something that you always need to adapt in some way to your material. Um, yeah, and customized and exported. You cannot export the models directly, but you can always export the entire training data of a model. We are now uh, close to the end, so I will just address a couple of more questions um, before we will wrap up the webinar as a whole. Um, yeah, tables, that uh, was a very common question I said, uh, but yeah, we will have another webinar in about one and a half months about table models. Um, same goes to specific patterns and regions of complex layouts, so like footnotes and marginalia, and also non-text features. As said, you can virtually recognize any type of visually, in some way, distinctive object in your material. And I think regarding limitations, I've also tried to address some of the issues as said with working uh, or working with field models within transcribers. There are some limitations. Um, 
hierarchical regions are still something more complex than mixed layouts as well, where you might find a workaround, but there is no straightforward solution, at least so far. And eventually, uh, regarding some specific use cases, um, I think we had the first one, uh, challenges. We've also addressed that one, as far as I can see. Um, the other one is not 100% clear to me, so uh, limited or poor quality training data. So uh, as always, that's a general rule uh, in machine learning. The better the data, the better the model. So uh, try to uh, be accurate once you tra train a model and produce accurate training data. Then you will also see that the model uh, will yield good results. And finally, cultural considerations. As said, the model does not care about culture, it cares about instances and pixels, so it labels pixels. And for that, it really does not care about uh, text or those instances in general. So it can really label those uh, regions that you uh, add to the model training. And that is. From our side, we've overrun two minutes. Um, maybe there are some more questions in the chat. I've not monitored it in the meantime. So if there's anything that uh, Johannes or Helene came up in the meantime, just let me know. One quick question that I was not able to answer properly. Um, the question came up about TEI export, which is in general possible uh, in both web and desktop app. But uh, does the TI export include the structure tags? It should. It, it should, yeah. OK. Just, just the actual just should, should sure, include yeah. the text. I, have, I haven't done issue, it yet. But but I, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I can't recall by heart. There was one issue, and that was specifically those confidences. That's basically a new metric that was introduced and also part of the XML. And that led to some tools not working properly. So from, from everything else, uh, the data is basically looking exactly the same as you annotated it manually. And uh, you could annotate uh, structural text for a very long time in transcribers already. What's different now is that you can really automatically recognize uh, this, this structural text and train models for that. Um, the only uncertainty I have at the moment, because I've not tested it, is if that confidence score that is added to the XML tag of that uh, very instance or, or of that region um, might mess up something. That's the only issue. If that's the case, that should be uh, rather easy to fix, I hope. <laughs> when I say it's easy to fix, then developers always prove us wrong. So um, there's always something that seems easy, might be more complex uh, when you have a look from a technical perspective. One, yeah, that's a good, very good question as it comes up. Um, reading order, um, we've also discussed that before. So that's a very, very important uh, yeah, element or basically um, aspect of the entire layout uh, that you want to export from, from, from text. Currently, as I said, the technology, let's call it rather, is rather stupid. So it can really just label instances. The reading order, of the document itself cannot train cannot be trained at the moment. So you can only label those instances, and then we have some, an algorithm that basically tries to have a, a rather simple way of organizing the reading order, which takes into account uh, the direction from the yeah, left to right and top to bottom. We are working on some more algorithms where you can uh, define how reading order is set up in your material. That's certainly one of the cases where feed models, and that's may also one that goes to the limitation slide, uh, definitely, where field models are not perfect yet. So reading order is definitely something where you uh, might either look for uh, yeah, a custom solution. So if you export your data, uh, I think from a machine learning perspective, you could develop your own tool, but that's very technical then uh, to uh, correctly order the regions in your material or uh, you might want to wait until we uh, yeah, further pursue this and try to also work on those algorithms that order it, or maybe even have some AI that uh, does this. One very general answer to it is, and you all know uh, large language models is large language models. 
So we've in some research projects already seen very good results with on the one hand end-to-end -end approaches where you really say that's the image and I want to have this output format, you do the rest. Um, so where you train really custom models for that, or also use the output from field models, for instance, and then process it with large language models to, for instance, order the, the reading order correctly. So there are a lot of different approaches, uh, but no built-in ones. As a long, short answer. Good. Then I would say we are overrunning six minutes. Maybe for some it's later than here. Here it's five. Maybe for some it's earlier. So I hope we gave you a good start to the day. Um, other than that, there is nothing left to say that we hope that you have a great time in using field models and we hope that you keep unlocking with transcribers as that's what we build transcribers for. So thanks everyone for joining and have a nice day.